Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be doing a tutorial of this look that I have on right now. This look is really about channeling a more simple, polished, yet defined look. It's about letting the skin speak for itself, not going overboard with contouring, highlighting. It's really about making the skin look healthy. All the makeup is intentional and simple and beautiful but it's not about excess. It's not completely effortless, but it's not completely all out. I think we need more looks like this. All the makeup looks, that, and believe me, I love these looks, are complete glam and just glass skin, half no makeup. I was reading an article and Terry Barber, um, a makeup artist I really, really love and follow, he was talking about how the glow is dead. And I thought that that was kind of an interesting concept because I love glowy skin. I love really fresh, beautiful skin, but it was an interesting concept and a way of thinking because sometimes it really is too much of a good thing. And I'm not just talking about really crazy highlights. I'm really talking about any makeup product. Makeup is an art and like with any art, there are a lot of varying ways to do art. This look is really taking it back to the roots of makeup being intentional, giving the face definition, letting the skin look as healthy and beautiful as possible. So this is kind of my take on a really polished, simple makeup look. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you do, make sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And again, remember, at the end of the day, makeup is just about what makes you happy. Okay, so first we're gonna start with skin prep. Skin prep is really important with really any makeup look you do. If your skin is not properly prepped. Makeup is not going to lay properly on top of it. So I do have skincare on today, but it's been a while since I hydrated my skin. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of the Caudalie grape water, just kind of refresh my skin a little bit. People love the beauty elixir from Caudalie. I think this is where it's at. This is very underrated. So when we're talking about this look in our skin, the goal is to look polished and intentional. I say the word intentional because every single step and every piece of the makeup look, we want the makeup to look like it's supposed to be there. That whole, you know, I woke up like this look or the no makeup makeup look, sometimes I feel like it can come off as unintentional or you really don't have makeup on, I kind of just look like this. I think that there can be, um, you know, a mid ground between completely effortless I just woke up like this and very, very polished and put together. And that middle ground is where we're trying to get to today. I want the skin to look refined, polished, healthy, beautiful, but not overdone whatsoever. The quality of the skin is just going to look healthy. To give that healthy lip from within sort of look, I'm not going to use highlight on top of the skin. I'm actually going to use a bit of the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. I'm going to use this on the places I would normally highlight my skin so that it just shines barely through the foundation. It's emulating healthy skin. I'm applying a little on my cheekbones. I like to do a little bit down the bridge of my nose and on my forehead, and then just blending that in with a sponge. So as you can see on its own, it would look a little bit too intense for this look, but when we apply foundation over it, it's definitely gonna take it down a notch. Let's throw my hair up. So again, for the base, I'm not going for something super, super dewy. I'm going more for a natural or skin-like finish. We have two options here. One of my favorite foundations for this look is the Cogendo Aqua Foundation. I've talked about this so many times on my channel, but I did wanna mention a new favorite, which is the Physician's Formula Healthy Foundation. I love this and I haven't been able to put it down. I have mine in the shade LN4. I'm going to use a beauty sponge to blend this into the skin. I'm going to err on the side of caution. I'm not going to use way too much. We don't want to look too put together. We just want it to look a little bit polished. I apologize if I keep saying that word. So I'm applying some to my cheeks, a little bit to my forehead, my chin, the less is more approach is definitely the way to go. But don't be afraid to put it where you need it. And then blending that in with my sponge. In the areas I don't need any coverage, like over here, I'm just dragging the excess product to make sure that it is slightly covered. But again, we don't really need much product there. The next step is to go in with a concealer that isn't 
five shades lighter than your foundation. A little bit lighter than your foundation is totally fine. We want to brighten the area without it looking too stark. And then feel free to cover any other spots that you would like. Next, we are going to powder the skin a little bit. And again, this isn't to completely mat out our face and we don't want our skin to not look skin-like. We still want it to have a luminosity to it. I'm going in with my ambient lighting palette and this isn't necessarily a setting powder. It's more like a finishing powder, but today I'm kind of breaking the rules and I want to go pretty much all over my face, but I'm gonna use a smaller brush so I can really control how much powder I'm putting on my face. And, and I like to personally do that so I'm not going overboard. I'm going to use pretty much all three shades and then I'm going to go mostly in the T-zone and then take, you know, the excess product on the rest of my face. My skin looks very polished, but it still has that little bit of glow still peeking out from behind it. Next step, once we've kind of got the base down, is to add some definition back into our face. And this is going to, again, help achieve that more polished look, making sure that we're being intentional. We want our eyes to be defined. We want some definition in our cheeks, but not going overboard. I'm going to start off with my Burberry Earthly Blush. This is great because it's kind of like a bronzer color, but it has a slight bit of luminosity and the undertone is great that if you wanted to use it as a blush, you could, but you could also kind of switch it up and use it as a bronzer if you have similar skin tone to mine. Making sure to build up the product rather than go in with a lot of product at once. And it really helps if you use stamping motions. I found this is especially helpful if you have a very pigmented bronzer or blush. So I'm focusing this under the cheekbone, but pulling it back up to kind of wrap around the cheekbone a little bit as well. Feel free to put a little bit on your forehead as well. Oh, it has that definition without it looking very obvious. Next, I'm going to use a little bit of this Kaja liquid blush. And I love this because it layers on top of powders completely fine. I just want a little bit of pop to the apples of the cheeks. Again, I can go in with the same brush and it's not going to kind of collect and look weird. But if you are afraid, go with a more neutral but slightly bright shade to put on the apples. And that just pops the cheek right in that spot. Next, before we define the eyes, I do want to define my brows because this is the part where I can kind of go overboard sometimes. To give a polished look, we don't want there to be a lot of apparent product in the brows. We want them to look fluttery, but not super untamed, which I have to be honest, I really love an untamed brow. Today, we want them to look feathery, but not undone. Going with my hourglass, a uh, brow sculptor. Go for a softer color if you can. Fill in the areas that you need. I need some right in here. This is not the best look to kind of um, change your brow shape. It should feel like a more polished version of you. Especially in here, really take your time and blend your edges. At least for me, I find that in here is the spot where a lot of a parent product can collect. So next we're going to set the brow. This is the Glossier Boy Brow in Clear. This is probably my favorite brow product. And it's a clear pomade, so it's going to give the brow texture, but it's not like hairspray for your eyebrows. There has that little bit of texture to give the brow realistic thickness. Also going to help them look a little bit more polished and stay in place. So I'm going up and back. Now that the eyebrows are done, I have a better idea of how much definition I want on the eyes. And I definitely want to go softer. So what I'm going to do is use my earthly bronzer blush thing. And I'm just going to put a little bit of this right in the crease. It's about defining the eye a little bit. You could even put a little bit on the outside of your eye, right in this corner. That's it for powder product on the eyes. I'm going to go in with my... Kevin Aquan eyelash curler. An eyelash curler is more imperative to my eye looks than mascara is sometimes. Next, going in with my CoverGirl Lash Blast Mascara. This one's great because it gives volume and definition 
without being too clumpy. See how fluttery that looks? A fluffy lash look. It's a really easy way to do a very polished eye look. Definitely go in with mascara on the bottom lashes if that is your cup of tea. I find that sometimes it's a little bit too much definition for me, so I skip bottom. Rock. This is great because it's a matte lip stain. It's a lot like the Glossier uh, Generation G's. This is a very pretty neutral color, but it's not going to detract from the skin. This look can really be paired with any lip though. This is the completed look. If you enjoyed this look, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you have any other questions about the look, what products I was using, any of the techniques I was talking about, definitely leave a comment down below. And let me know, how do you feel about this more polished look? I'd love to hear your thoughts and I will see you in my next video.